Notts County Talk, we are back with a very special video, as you can see. Big thank you to the club and big thank you to Alex and Chris Reed who have joined us, Notts County owners. Um, really do appreciate you joining us. Um, how are you doing? Yeah, good evening, guys. Thank you for having us on. It's our pleasure. Um, so if you've seen our interview earlier in the season with Luke Williams, it's going to follow the same format. We asked for so many questions from you guys. We probably ended up with 50 or 60, didn't we, George, to wade through. We, uh, we have put names to some questions but a lot of people ask similar questions. So if your name isn't on that question, um, rest assured, it, it we did see them all and we did put them all together. So your questions, as always, uh, massively, massively appreciated. So Alex and Chris, we've got, we're going to start off with a quiz and it's it's your time since you've been the owners of Knots. Um, we're going to go against each other. So I'm going to give points to the winners for each, uh, for each question. So let me find my pen and I'll give points to, to the winners. So I'll, I'll kick off the first part of the quiz. There's four questions. And um, we'll get onto some fun questions and then George will give you the second part of the quiz. So for round one, then, um, I think we'll let Alex answer the question first. And then for round two, we'll let Chris answer. Uh, so, Alex, as of today, how many days has Luke Williams been in charge of knots? Um... It's a tricky one. 200... 40. 240. Chris, what are you going with? I'm going to say 241. Oh, tactical. The answer is 260. Chris gets the first point. <laughs> Second question. Since you took over as owners, how many league wins have not managed? So what will that be? Three and a half seasons, more than three and a half seasons. How many league wins? So because it's round one, Alex, I'll let you go first. How many league wins do you think Knotts have managed since you've been the owners? Mm, let's say 61. 61. Chris? 62. <laughs> <laughs> Answer is 86. 86 okay. league wins. Okay. Chris goes two up. Alex, you can get your own back on the second half. You can you can be tactical. Um, question number three for this first round. This is a really tricky one. How many league goals have not scored? And most of them will probably be this season based on how many were scoring. But how many league goals have not scored in the three and oh, just over half seasons? Alex, what do you think? How many league goals? I'm going to say, oh, that's a tricky one, 170. 170. Chris, what are you going for? Um, I know what's coming. question is, is it 169 or 171? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 210. 210. It's actually 293. We scored 293 wow. goals, which is a massive amount. But what's Chris? Three up. And the final question for the start of for the first round of questions is of signings since you've been in charge, who is our top scoring signing? Now, it's not going to be an attacking player, obviously, but what player do you think has scored the most that you've signed, Alex? And I'll give you the number. Okay. It's, it's 47 goals. Someone has scored 47. Yeah, I'm picking between two players. Um, I'm going Carl Wooten. Chris? That would be my answer as well. Going Carl Wooten. Carl Wooten has scored 47 goals, so you both get the point. Second place would be Ruben with 44. Um, Maka incredibly has only been here less than a season he's got 32 in the league uh cal roberts would have been there with 20 and then kedwin with 14 goals um so it's 4-1 but alex you can obviously get your own back with being a bit more tactical in the second half of the quiz which uh which george will be leading yes. so we're happy to get on with some fans questions we've had so many so many sent in yeah um, we've good. put them in the most logical order we can so first <clears throat> question is from instagram and it comes from um 
Ollie Castle from Instagram. Do either of you have a team that you support? I've, I've never had a, a favorite team in England. A lot of people have asked me and I've never really had one until uh, 2019, um, not County. So uh, in Denmark, I used to support, uh, support FC Copenhagen. Mm. Um, when we, I think both Chris and I did that, when uh, that was our team when we were, um, when we were younger. But uh, in England, never really had a team before Nuts. But uh, never. I definitely have one. Did you watch much uh, English football before you came uh, over to Nuts? Um, yeah, we did. I mean, when we were based in Denmark, we, we both when we were based in Denmark and, and here, of course, but. Um, yeah, it, there's always been a really big interest uh, for English football in in Denmark uh, because the um, the games were on the the betting um, pools every Saturday, so people were watching the the English games, um, and we did that as well. So yeah, definitely we've been following the we we didn't follow the national league or the conference as it might have been called at that time when we were living in Denmark, but. Uh, that was more the Premier League, I suppose. But now we, we follow the National League very intensely. I gen I honestly think National League is probably one of the best leagues in the world. That is so, it's so, I, I honestly believe for drama, there's, n there's yeah. not many leagues like it. I think it, it's up there. It is definitely up there as one of the best. It's definitely a really interesting league. Um, next question, which George will put to you, is probably one of our most asked questions. We've probably had 10, 15 people wanting to know this. Um, yeah, so Tom Daylor from Twitter asks, what made you take over Notts County? I think that um, there were a number of factors. Um, first of all, just um, the history of the club, everything about the club was a, something really appealing. That I think a fantastic, unrivaled history. Um, and with the being based in, in Nottingham and with such a big supporter base and yeah, in, in, in all ways, uh, a, a fantastic club. Um, the fact that the club had been relegated was not, of course, was a disadvantage. It meant a, 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 a more difficult starting position, but from our point of view, it was always as a, a more long-term project. So we were more interested in picking um, the right club um, as opposed to sort of focusing on which league the, the, the club was playing in. So I think, yeah, just everything about the club just seemed really interesting to us. Alex, um, we just spoke about, I just spoke about how interesting the National League is. Um, from what Chris has just said, it surprised myself as a fan. I know it surprised a lot of Notts fans. Is how difficult the National League is to get out of. Has, has that surprised you? I'm not sure it surprised us that much, to be honest. I mean, it's certainly, it is very difficult, as you say, but I think, um, I mean, we were very aware of that going into the, the project. Um, I don't think you find many leagues, if any, uh, in Europe where only one in 12 teams go up. Right. So, um, yeah, we were we were aware of that and we... Um, we also knew that the, the level of the league was uh, high and that the gap between uh, the National League and League Two is, is not particularly big. Um, also looking at how teams that do get promoted from the National League, how they perform in League Two. Um, so uh, it's certainly very, very difficult league to get out of. Uh, it's something we've been very aware of from the beginning. And as Chris says, of course, it's a disadvantage compared to if you uh, um, take over a League Two club, but it, it's a very long-term project for us. So it was more important that it was the, the right club rather than uh, the right league position. Yeah, I think I, we had a few questions as well based around the longevity of it and the fact you just said it's a long-term project. I think will make a lot of fans fans really happy about that because all I think as Notts fans, all we've wanted is like stability, and we, we've we feel like we finally got that. Yeah. Next question um, comes from Jay Leverton. It's more of a general question, what's it like to be the owners of a football club? Something probably we can only dream about. Yeah, it's uh, it's very exciting, I would say. Um, the excitement uh, of the games is a, 
at a new level that I have not experienced before, even though I'm a big football fan, um, because you're so uh, invested in it. There's so much at stake. Um, but yeah, I think it's um, very enjoyable. It's been certainly been enjoyable first three and a half years. And um, I think it's, it's really nice going to the games. There's a uh, quite a different experience going to the home and away matches. Obviously, at Meadow Lane, you're in a big stadium with a very good view of analyzing football. And sometimes you, when we go to the smaller stadiums, maybe we don't have the best view, but it's also a nice experience and you speak with a lot of fans there. Um, but yeah, generally, it's uh, I think exciting is the, the word that describes it the best. Chris, do you have like a ground that's an away ground that sticks out as one that you enjoy going to, or one that had a great atmosphere, or one that we got a good result at? Good question. Um, I remember the FA Cup win at Epps Fleet. No, obviously they're not in our league anymore, but um, probably just picking that because we we had a light last uh, a, a nice uh, last minute winner there. Um, but no, I, I don't think I have a particular favorite, but I think as Alex says, it's quite a nice uh, variation in sort of the football stadiums that you get to visit. Um, Meadow Lane is a, a brilliant stadium, I think at, at all levels and particularly at this level. Um, but it's also, uh, quite interesting to, on some of the smaller stadiums, you, you get really close to the action, uh, which is, which is also quite nice. So I enjoy it home and away games um, in, in different ways, I would say. Yeah, I do I do enjoy an away game, do you, George? Yeah, we do, don't we? Love it, love it. Love the away games. Um, next question then, George. Um, Nathaniel uh, from Facebook has asked, are you happy with what you have done since you have taken over the club? Yeah, I think we are definitely happy with some things that we've done. We would always like to be be better and continue to improve. I think... Um, I think the club is on, on, on the right track, and we have we, we we knew some of the areas that we would like to try and add value to to the club, and I think we're improving in those. But um, we we don't in any way see it as if it's it's still very much an, an ongoing project where we need to keep improving. I think we can we can always get better at, at, at everything that we do. So yeah, we're just aiming to get better uh, on and off the pitch every every year. Yeah, I think we can see progress as fans definitely on the pitch from, and th this will be reflected in the questions later that George is going to ask you on the quiz, but we're seeing progression from from season one to where we are now, which is effectively season four, definitely. Big time. I think, I think one of the biggest things is connect with the fan base. The fans in the club just feel so connected at the moment. And I think, you know, as owners, you've got to take a lot of credit for that. Do you feel that as well when you come into the stadium at Medellin? Do you feel the connection that's been especially growing this season between... Um, fans and, and players, Alex? Yeah, definitely. I think, uh, I mean, the attendance figures are very impressive, but also just, to the, I think there's a really good atmosphere and we can certainly sense that as well, that there's a lot of uh, optimism and uh, really good support to the to the players. And um, yeah, it's something we really appreciate as well. And um, yeah, so we, we can definitely feel that. Yeah. Next question is from... Matthew Turner on Twitter, and I actually saw an article written by someone um, a couple of days ago, and I think it described our battle with Wrexham at the top as Hollywood versus Moneyball. That's what I saw the article as. And I don't know if you'd describe your approach as Moneyball, um, but there are a few clubs that sort of take that, take that step. Are there any clubs that the two of you take inspiration from in the way they are run? Or is it very much you've decided to run the club this way because it's how you believe a club should be run? Or have you looked in, into teams higher at the pyramid? Um, yeah, I think there are, there are many different uh, ways of running a club, different types of owners who do very different things. Um, so I don't know if there's a, one particular club I would mention, but it's more sort of clearly the, the approach that we follow is that we, we have some experience in football analysis, football data, and we would try to make use of that in, in running the club and be as effective as possible in our decisions on uh, especially recruitment and 
tactical, uh, see if we can develop tactical decisions together with the, the coaching team. And so I guess there are certainly other clubs around the world that have been, that you could sort of see uh, performing really well relative to, to um, not just at an absolute level, but also relative to, to the sort of uh, financial situation of, of the club. So, yeah, I think for us, it's about, um, I think for us, the key to progress the club is to, to, to be as, as smart as we possibly can in our decision-making and recruitment and generally the financial decisions in the club. Yeah, fair enough. It's more, if, oh, I don't know, the way they approach it feels like from a fund's point of view, the word I would use, I don't know if you would as well, George, it feels sustainable. Yeah, a lot more sustainable than than sort of previous ownership at Nuts for sure. I mean, by a mile as well. It's the improvements that we've seen, you know, on the pitch, off the pitch are just vast, aren't they, really? Yeah, definitely. I don't know if that's the, the word you would like to think of it as. Alex, sustainable? Um, yeah, potentially. I guess it depends on how you define sustainable. I mean, um, we, we see it as a sustainable setup because we are we, we are in this for we, we plan that we we have a plan for how we were gonna um, run this project for a very long time so in that way it's sustainable it is um it's difficult to um uh, sort of realistically all clubs at this level who want to be ambitious will be um making a loss but um once you hopefully get into the efl that's uh, that then it becomes more realistic to uh, potentially run one day uh, make it a profitable business as well yeah next question george uh this is from tom uh from twitter is there any benefit for knots uh with your involvement in viborg ff yeah i think just um i mean we don't have any sort of very direct um collaborations between the clubs in, in that sense but i think of course um, there is there can be knowledge sharing or sort of experiences that you experience that you have from from one club that may be useful to, to they can help you make better decisions in the other club and vice versa so i think um that there, there can be some positive things like that yeah yeah i think discussing things like commercial uh, revenue how do you uh, uh, ticketing uh, models, all, all those uh, things off the pitch, I think are interesting for uh, people in the football club to discuss with uh, other clubs. And obviously, with the ownership situation here, there's a unique um, opportunity to to get more access to another club than you would normally do if you approach a club for uh, collaboration. Um, so in that way, there are some uh, there are definitely ways you can uh, learn from each other. Uh, and we've always a, a, a well-run club that we, um, there was a strong setup already when we came in. So there's, there's definitely things we can, uh, the two clubs can learn from each other, I think. Something I'd be interested in, obviously you, you can, everyone knows the, the bigger clubs across Europe, your Real Madrid's, Inter Milan's, uh, you know, Lyon, Marseille. But for, for a team, like Viborg in a league that we're not sure about, is, is it hard to say where they would fit in the English pyramid? Are they sort of the, the standard of League One, League Two, Championship, National League, or is it is it really too hard to sort of make that comparison? Because they, are they in the, they're in the highest division in in Denmark? Yeah, yeah. Um, I would probably say, yeah, hypothetically, of course, but they. Would probably be top league one, bottom championship, or something. Like, I don't know what you think. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking the same. Top league one, probably. Yeah, because that's interesting because a very little knowledge about that. So, yeah, top league, top league one, bottom championship. Something like that. I need to go and check. <laughs> uh, let's have a look. We've got our next question. Bit of a play on words. Pythagoras um, from Twitter. How difficult is it to set a budget for the season? So we'll tackle that part of the question first of all. How difficult is it to set that budget? Yeah, I, I think, I mean, like any other business, it's um, 
of course difficult to predict exactly what your your income is going to be like um in a football club there are there are of course some uh, things that are hard to control and predict such as um I mentioned in the second part of the question here if a cup runs and uh, uh, player transfers but um I think we it's certainly an important decision but it's um it's something we're pretty confident in and we um yeah we try to make our best estimates on what are the chances of what what are the expected incomes from various uh channels so i think it's uh, it's something we we also have uh, good people at the club who can uh, make some good predictions of attendances and so on mm. um and the second part then was the fa cup exit missed opportunity to boost finances i believe uh colville we lost to in the fa cup i think it was yeah. um there's very mixed feelings amongst fans do we want to progress in the fa cup get some money obviously that, that brings in maybe get a big side come into Medellin or away or do we want to focus on the league um, in truth we never really know as fans how much money the FA Cup brings in but do you wish we'd have gone a bit further in that yeah I, I would always uh, I would always prefer to go as far as possible in the FA Cup sure uh, not only for financial reasons but also I think uh, it's uh, it's, a, it's a positive thing from a uh, fans point of view and uh, you, you get some potentially very exciting fixes and I think we would uh, once that once we hopefully get that if it got run we, we would be able to uh, have a squad that can uh, can cope with it and focus on both that and, and the league so yeah I would, I would always uh, prefer to win those matches that's for sure it's been a long time since we've had a really big side in the FA Cup I think we played Swansea a few years before you took over, and I believe the score was 8-1 to Swansea. Um, but then the one that sticks out, George, it has to be Man City at home. We have Man City, yeah. didn't we? Went 1-0 up. Went 1-0 up. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think if uh, you draw Swansea again, we'll do better than, uh, than 8-1. <laughs> <laughs> I hope yeah. so. And it was, it was away from home. It was a nightmare. But yeah, the Man City, if we could... Yeah, I'm sure it will happen, but get a side like Man City again coming to Med Lane, it will be... It will be Unbelievable, and you get that exposure from from those fixtures, don't you? Usually, those sides are on television. Um, next question. Now, this one that George is going to read out for you is from Colin. Now, Colin's got two questions um, in here. First yeah. one, George. First one. Then, uh, if you could revisit one decision during your tenure and go a different way, which would it be, and why? It's quite a tricky one. Yeah, that is a tricky one. Um, it's a good question. I think it's also I mean, maybe quite obviously good. many. It's hard to think of one big decision. I mean, there's obviously, um, you know, n no one gets all decisions right. So uh, the, I'm, I'm sure there's been lots of minor things here and there that uh, could have been better. Um, but I think, yeah, we. It's I guess it's all about uh, minimizing those and uh, you with player transfers for example you'll never you'll never make only successful transfers but um, it's it's just about getting more right than than the other clubs but uh, it's hard to think of one one major decision I think I suppose that's a, that's a positive that's a massive positive that you can't think of a major decision like that I think on the signings front personally feel like the large majority have been successful signings or made a difference to the squad, whether that be like a, per a permanent sign or a loan sign in. I don't know what you think, George, but that's the perspective I've got. Yeah, wholeheartedly agree with you, Tom. Um, we've got a question coming in from Facebook then, um, and this would this would probably be um, sent to both of you. Now, again, you might give me more than one name for this because it's quite tricky, but Barry Holland has asked, in your opinion, who has been the best signing since taking over? Now, that might be impact on the pitch, that could be in terms of um, what we've gained from having them financially. Are there any names that, that stick out there or would there be a couple? Chris, if we go to you first for that one. Um, I don't know if I would sort of say a specific name. I think they've been, as I said, you, you, you definitely can't get every decision 
right here. So you want to have the best possible hit rate. I think based on the fact that we have, um, I mean, I think the current season is our strongest season in terms of performances. Um, so you can say that the, the players who are in the current squad, whether that's the one that arrived this summer or, or of course, many players in the current squad came from earlier. Those players have been incredibly successful, I think, with their performances this this season. So you could probably point at those players as a group, but I think it's really hard to single out one. Um, they've all uh, made a really important contribution to the performances so far. Would you say the same, Alex? Yeah, I think it's really difficult to single one one out. So yeah, I would go with the same uh, thing. Yeah. But yeah, it would make sense to consider this the, the group of current players at least. I think because we are, we certainly uh, we certainly think this season is uh, the strongest uh, strongest team we've had since we uh, since we came here. Mm. We'll go for two more questions, George, and then I'll let you lead with the second part of the quiz where yes, yeah. Alex can get his own back with the answers. I'm, so, I'm looking forward to the. So you're saying about the quiz. That's... <laughs> the first two questions are are very stats based, so um, it's it's worth saying that our questions have come in uh, and we've been helped out with those um, by Not Stats on Twitter. So Richard, who's at Not Stats, has, has done um, a really really good job in in helping us those facts, and also Tom Williams as well, who has helped us out with those. So just want to say halfway through this video, a massive thank you to those two who have who have supplied us with those those stats um, and definitely more trustworthy than us collecting those stats, George, because they are oh, very, very, very thorough. Very thorough. Yeah, they are. They are. Um, George, next question is from you. Right. Loz Clough from Facebook asked, are there plans in place to retain key players next season, regardless of what league we're in? Well, I know who that people will be sniffing around. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think the... Um... The league status will certainly have an effect on uh, the likelihood of retaining certain players. I think that's fair to say. Um, but it's, I think, if whatever league we're in, we, we, we're, we're planning carefully for, for every scenario. And um, I mean, there are definitely players that we would like to retain. If for whatever reason some players can't be retained, then I'm really optimistic that we can bring in uh, other players that can uh, can be really good. It's always our goal to be stronger for every season and whatever league we're going to be in, that is our goal that the team that we have next season should be even stronger than the one we have this season and that will be the goal regardless of, of um, what the stage is for all the current players. So that that is our big goal. Yeah, we obviously know the names of people that are, are performing really well and it's, it's it's also flattering to be players that those linked away because it shows how well they're doing, doesn't it, really? Um, but let's hope, let's hope it's in, it's in back in the Football League. Does it make it that bit harder that if, if, the season where we were 20 points clear, for example, now of second place and we, we pretty much knew we were getting promoted, the fact that it's probably going to go down to the last couple of games, does that make that planning a little bit harder or would you always have had both scenarios in your head? Uh, we would always try and plan with both scenarios. But of course, in um, in the, the case you mentioned there, where if we were 10, 20 points clear, then you might start. Uh, well, then then you put more thoughts into, the, into plan A um, and you can sort of start... Uh, potentially preparing uh, with um, the main focus on that one. Um, but no, we, we generally uh, try to plan for, for both scenarios. Um, it makes it slightly easier when the when the season ends earlier, like this year, where we I think we had uh, that was one of the other years where it ended quite late, probably the COVID year, um, mm -hmm. which th th that, that makes it more difficult. But I think um, as long as the season doesn't go into um, June, then uh, then we are fine. Yeah, um, we'll go one more question then, and then we'll we'll go into the second part of the quiz. Um, so Charlie from Twitter said, "Would promotion to the football league give you more scope in the foreign transfer market?" 
Alex, we start with you for that one. Um, not particularly. Uh, I mean, the, the current rules are pretty restrictive in terms of um, which players you can sign in or sign from from abroad. Uh, there is a difference uh, in the in the national league. It's uh, it's not possible at all to bring in uh, players. So the the point system that applies to EFL clubs doesn't exist in the national league. Mm-hmm. So uh, even if we uh, want to sign Lionel Messi, he couldn't uh, join us camps as it is at the moment. Um, so there are some options uh, with this point system when you're in, in the EFL, but realistically, the way it's designed currently, it's um, it's pretty difficult to bring in uh, or f- for the players that we would be looking at um, in terms of. Uh, whether they've played for international teams or played in higher higher leagues is usually the what you need to have uh, on your CV in order to be able to get the 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 permit to, uh, to yeah. join an English club. So uh, it would probably not change that much. In the... Yeah, it, it it's really a system that is designed to that allows Premier League clubs to bring in more or less the same players as they could before. But I think in any league below that, especially the League One, League Two, it's practically impossible to find any players that would fit the points-based criteria. Um, mm. So we can hope that there will be some. Obviously, it's a new system, so we could hope that there will be some changes to that system because it seems a bit um, overly restrictive to have. I mean, probably the National League must be one of the very few leagues in the world that has a complete ban on signing players from uh, from other countries so maybe there is a solution where you, it doesn't have to be a completely free um free um, access for foreign players but maybe still some kind of higher limit could be possible we could hope yeah be interesting if that if that would change so currently it's chris for alex one well, as I said, this is a chance to get it back. So, George, are you ready with your four questions? Um, it gets interesting now. There's some there's some difficult questions. Some difficult questions. So, the first one, what what's the average match match xG for this season? I'll give you a reference point. Your first season at Notts, it was one point five four. So, um, is that um, just for for Notts as goals, not the other season? Nuts. Yeah. Okay. So did you say just for for this season? Just for this season, yeah. Two point one. I'll say two point two. The answer is two point one four. So Chris just nicks that one. <laughs> that was a quick... great oh, effort. To be I fair. feel like Alex could have won that one if you'd played tactical like I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. One, one, but... You'll have to go tactical <laughs> on the next one. Point one off. Point one off. Um, similar sort of question for the next one. Uh, shots per ninety minutes this season. Um, yeah, go for it, Chris. Yeah, okay. Um, I'm not generally so interested in just in shots, but um, so just our shots, right? Just Would you like a reference average. from your from your first season? It was an average of 10.66 from the first season. Okay. Um, so I will say 15. I will say... 14.99 then <laughs> <laughs> the answer is 14.38 so alex wins that one good tactics there alex good tactics love it right question three how many clean sheets since you've taken over at knots that's in the league in the league yeah mm-hmm. Fifty. I'll say sixty. The answer is fifty-nine. Alex gets 
Another point. <laughs> one clawing off. It back, clawing it back. Okay. Uh, final one. Final one then. Who can get closest to the exact record attendance against Yeovil? It's a tricky one. Very tricky. Back in November. This is one that Alex could be very, very tactical with. <laughs> yeah. um, just trying to remember the exact figure here. Um, I'm going to say sixteen thousand nine hundred and fifty. Yeah, I think that's a pretty good guess. I'm gonna go. One lower than that, so. <laughs> okay, well, the answer is 16,511, so you win again, Alex. Great great team of tactics, working for you on that, that half there. So we finished with Alex on four and Chris on five. One above. So it's pretty close. Some good answers there. Some very, very close answers as well with the attendance, um, with the XG was very, very close. Um, shots per 90 was close and you got the obviously top scorers. So yeah, well done. Some good stats there. I think the hardest question was league goals with 293. I'm, I'm, I'm a bit uh, unhappy with our answers there retrospectively, but next time yeah. we come back, we'll be better prepared. We could give you we could give you notice next time of a quiz as well. <laughs> give you a bit of notice. Um, we've got a few questions left. Um, just, just to ask you. So, let's have a look at this one, uh, George. I believe it's your question. Yeah. Okay. Richard from Facebook asks, uh, with an older fan base, what new incentives may we see that will encourage younger fans in the city to choose knots? And I think that would. It's worth saying as well with with our neighbours Forest going to the Premier League. I think that's been something that knots fans have been a bit not concerned with, but they think a Premier League team is now in the city. How, how are we going to get younger fans into to knots? Yeah, that's a, I think that's a good question and uh, something we we are very keen on uh, to uh, to ensure that we uh, we get more younger fans as well in the in the future. Um, and it, I would say it's also something we are as a club uh, very happy to listen to uh, suggestions from from fans. Um, but yeah, I think there's um, there's many things we can consider. We've obviously got the family, uh, the family stand, and we have a couple of initiatives around um, um, uh, kids in uh, in schools at certain ages, uh, where we um, will try and encourage them to uh, come to games by potentially giving some shirts or free tickets. Um, and I'm sure there's lots of other things, uh, initiatives that. Uh, Brilliant people at the club are working on that Chris and I are maybe not fully up to speed on, but uh, I think there are. It, it's something that we are definitely keen on um, uh, trying to to make sure that we we do as much as we can. Um, whether we have uh, some uh, kids fan zones around the the stadium or, or other things that uh, we can do, so um, yeah, it's it's certainly a important thing to focus on i think yeah i mean it's good to hear we said the engagement we feel is is really good with fans so i'm sure that'll that'll help um colin's got a, another question here we had him early but he's got another question first of all do you know who the best paddle player is at the club and were there any other development uh, options considered before building the courts um we we haven't had any uh, internal tournaments or anything like that yet <clears throat> Um, but I'm sure some of the some of the players will be keen to get out there. Maybe uh, maybe after the season. Um, so I'm not sure who will uh, who'll take that one. But uh, generally, we are um, really pleased with that project. And um, as you've probably seen, the, the courts are available for booking now, and um, there's been a really good uh, uptake on that. And it seems like yeah, the feedback has been very positive. So um, we're quite excited about that. I um, I play quite a bit myself in London, and uh, really enjoy the sport. So I would definitely uh, 
recommend everyone to to give it a go. It's it's the fastest growing sport in in the world, I believe. So it's uh, it's just a lot of fun, and um, I think yeah, yeah, it's something we're really happy to to add to the to the city a new sport, and uh, we also think it's a sound investment from a financial point of view that it can generate some important revenue for the, for the club in in the longer term. Uh, so, uh, but we'll have to we we'll have to find out who is the best player. Yeah, but well, we're we're gonna have a go at that, aren't we, George? Maybe maybe we'll be pretty good at it. Um, three questions left. George, over to you. Yeah, Max from Instagram asks: Have Luke and the team exceeded your expectations for this season? Yeah, I think I think I would say yes to that because we had high expectations and um, we. We, we, we thought we had a, a really good head coach in, in Luke and um, a strong squad with some good signings. But I think still the performances have been even better than we expected. Um, we will see what the outcome of the season is. But just based on on the, I think the results, um, I think we can look at the goal difference and we can look at underlying performance indicators. I think it all looks really good. Um, so I think I would say yes, that is, has been a, a really good season so far. Um, penultimate question then. This is from Dave on Twitter. This might also be a tricky one to answer, but where do you visualise the club being in three years' time? We often get questions about five or ten, but three years' time, so both thinking with your head but also your heart. I think my heart says in three years' time I'd like us to be pushing for the championship. My head obviously says no chance. But um, Alex, what do you think about that? Yeah, as you say, it's it's a really tricky question because we we know how much randomness there is in uh, football results. So we can obviously try to make the team as strong as possible, which we're very happy with at the moment. But it is really difficult to uh, to predict. We can see how you know we were in the playoff final in the first year against Harrogate. If we had won that one, who knows where we would have been now? So, and that's just one game. So especially with this format in in the national league where uh quite often you would end up in a bit of a playoff lottery i think it's really hard um but i'd like to think we are that we are definitely in the efl yeah i'd love that love that that same for you chris same answer yeah i mean i didn't the the heart uh visualization i guess would just be as high as you can possibly go in three years but yeah um it's <laughs> I think, um, as Alex says, hard to predict, but um, certainly hope to be in, back in the EFL. And our final question then, to finish it off, um, we've put the name of, of Sally on this one, Sally Jones from Twitter, but realistically it was on the end of every question we had. It was a little message at the end. Um, George? Um, do you know how much the average fan in the stands really appreciates what you're doing for the club? Um, I mean, we're very happy to, to hear that. And I think, I mean, I think all the, the Nuts supporters have been absolutely fantastic in the time that we've been in the club. Um, everyone we've spoken to has it's always been a positive conversation and speaking to fans at fans forums or different other locations is always a real pleasure. Um a football club is something so important for the people that follow it that uh, we feel a lot of responsibility and to make sure that the club is running in the best possible way. And if people think that we have done a good job of that, that's really great to hear. And we hope we can give them something to everyone, something to cheer for on the pitch as well. Yeah, really appreciate it. That's from that's from ourselves as well and all fans. I've got one more one more thing before you before we go. I just want to know how your nerves are for the final ten or eleven games of the season. Are you pretty calm at the minute? Because yeah. I'm not. <laughs> yeah, they're all right. I mean, we'd uh, of course we'd laugh that there were just two uh, two automatic promotion spots. Then uh, it'd be a bit easier. But uh, now we are excited and very confident in the in the team. So uh, we. Uh, we look forward to the games. Yeah. 
So do we. Well, I look forward to it when it's finished and we've got the win. I don't necessarily enjoy it, um, not enjoying them during the game, but um, the football is actually making it enjoyable. It's so good to watch, isn't it, George? It is, yeah. Good. Um, that wraps up our episode then. Massive thank you to yourselves, Chris and Alex, for joining us, taking your time to answer the fans' questions. Um, so many people wanted to ask the questions. I hope we've answered a range um, that, that the people wanted asking. Um, big thank you again to the club for facilitating um, having you on. And also, I want to shout out again, Not Stats and Tom Williams for helping us with those. Um, if you have enjoyed the video, please do leave a like. And as always, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel as we have a load more content coming during the run-in to the end of the season.